So thank you very much for the kind introduction and I also would like to thank Robert and its staff for organizing this nice conference. Uh, yeah, today I'm going to present you a couple of results we obtained uh, on the topic of hybrid uh, organic X-ray detectors, in particular for flat panel X-ray detectors. Um, the results I'm going to show you have been obtained in the frame of two founded projects. Uh, uh, the first one founded from uh, the German uh, Federal Ministry of Education and Research, so a German uh, founded project, the project Hopix, which is already terminated last year. And the second one is a uh, EU uh, project, H2020, the DICOMO project, which is, which is a running project, and we are now uh, almost at half time, so it's, there, these are preliminary results I'm going to present you. Um, I think. Almost everybody in these rooms already know that uh, the sector, uh, the healthcare sector of Siemens has been uh, spun out in a uh, separated managed company. And uh, this in 2015. In May 2016, we got a new name and a branding. Uh, it's uh, Siemens Healthy Years, uh, which is somehow embodying the pioneering spirit and the engineering expertise which our company has. So uh, even though it's a new company, we have a long history, it's almost 160 years or a bit more than 160 years that uh, Siemens is working on healthcare. And this is one of the most beloved uh, slides of our CEO, Bernd Montag. So because it's a bit giving a uh, the company in, in one slide, so the most important figures of merit. Um, so we have um, roughly uh, 45,000 employees. Um, uh, more than 70% of the critical uh, decisions which are made in a, a healthcare business are based on uh, technology which we have in our portfolio. Uh, we have roughly 1,500 invention disclosure in 2015. So we are doing also innovation and, and um, R&D activities. Uh, we can address with our technologies uh, 1 billion people in developing countries. So this is our access at the moment. Uh, the revenue in 2015 was uh, 13 billion euro. We are present in 73 countries. Uh, we are a world uh, market leader in most uh, businesses. We are amongst the biggest supplier of uh, medtech infrastructure. Um, we spend more than one billion in R&D. And I think this is a really impressive number is that uh, more than 200,000 patients every hour are uh, Diagnosticized with uh, uh, products in our portfolio. So it's it, it's quite uh, quite interesting numbers. So now in the Siemens Healthcare Healthy Years, uh, I am located in the Technology Center. So what is the Technology Center? Is the central R&D department for cutting edge uh, innovation and technologies. So what we conduct is basically basic and applied research uh, in. In, in order to support the business units, and the business units are our customer, basically. Um, uh, we provide an efficient and effective uh, business-specific research activities, and f of course our um, task is also to generate uh, IP and strategic potential of, of, of IP rights. Um, this is, of course, our contribution to make uh, Siemens Healthy Nears become the enabler of healthcare providers worldwide. So there is here the North Star we are pursuing in, in, in our journey. And this is basically make uh, improve outcomes for healthcare providers at uh, lower costs. I would like to use this slide also as a disclaimer. So since we are in a central R&D department, the results we, we, which you will sh see today uh, it's not a, a product development, it's rather uh, we are testing the suitability of a new technology. Um, in within the technology, uh, the 
um, the um, technology center. I am in the field or in the technology field, which is called basic medical technologies. And here you can see just an, an example of activities we have done uh, in the past, projects we have done in the past and in, in today. So basically we address the entire X-ray imaging chain, so starting from let's see the sources, for example, with carbon nanotubes as field emitters. Uh, we have um, a beam shaping, for example, as a dynamic collimator. Um, we are having quite a lot of activities now in the field of perovskites as direct converter, so similar to cadmium zinc telluride. Uh, there was a project about coating of cesium iodide needles for improving MTF. And this is the t uh, topic I would like to talk today, so the hybrid uh, uh, detectors. And let's, enough with uh, corporate slides, let's go a little bit more in the technical. Uh, so probably you already know this, this, uh, these two techniques we have seen yesterday with uh, Inge and earlier this morning with uh, Bijou, the two different technologies which are state of the art today in flat panel X-ray detectors. So we have the indirect detectors um, based on cesium iodide and usually amorphous silicon uh, flat pane um, back planes. So the X-ray photon is absorbed, uh, light is emitted and as you can see here, the light is emitted isotropically uh, even though there is a Columnar structure, this is working on in a limited manner. So there is inevitably a optical crosstalk in between neighboring or adjacent <coughs> pixels. So this is somehow limiting the resolution of indirect converters. Typically it's two, three lines per millimeter. The conversion rate, uh, so let's say the sensitivity, is, is rather high, so with 10,000 electrons per nanograde per square millimeter. Um, typical thicknesses of, of the cesium iodide is between 300 uh, micrometer to 800. There is a tendency to go even higher now at the moment, but even lower, as we have seen yesterday. Um, and the voltage required are really few, so only few volts for driving the photodetector. On the other hand, we have direct converters, so the X-ray is converted directly in, into electric charges, and since there is a field applied, the special resolution, the special information of the charger is retained. So there is no optical crosstalk at all, and the resolution is, is rather high, so we have the five, uh, four to five lines per millimeter. Um, they are unfortunately not suited for high energy X-rays, so for a rad application, it's amorphous selenium, not really a good absorber. Uh, it has a lower conversion rate in comparison to uh, amorphous silicon, so 4,000 against 10,000. And the typical thicknesses, let's say, in, in the case of mammography, is something like 100 microns. And high voltages are required. Um, this plot shows you basically the same as I've said you before. So here we have in the y-axis the DQE, so the sensitivity, and the x-axis the modulation transfer function, so the resolution. And here I'm trying to put uh, the two technology in, as the bubbles, so the amorphous selenium has a high resolution but a rather low sensitivity, and the amorphous selenium, of uh, and the amorphous silicon, of course, depending on the thickness, can be tailored a little bit in an ellipse. Uh, so we have rather high sensitivity but low resolution for thick scintillators, but uh, but you can go on so on high resolution, but you are losing in sensitivity, of course. And what we'd like to um, obtain with, um, with the hybrid approach, I don't know why this completely messed up, but <laughs> um, I will, will see it later in, in the SEM pictures. So we will try to take the benefits of both technologies in one, so have a high sensitivity at the same time a high resolution. So our aim is to go in the upper corner of this plot. 
And we think that the unique, unique selling points, so the clinical added value we are generating is basically to have a high resolution because there is potentially no optical crosstalk. Um, there is a huge potential for low fabrication costs, as we will see later. Uh, and we have a much higher stability than amorphous selenium. So the working principle is, uh, is simple. So we have, um, let me go back. We have uh, organic semiconducting material, which is typically a mixture of uh, P and uh, N semiconductors. It's a kind of uh, interpenetrating networks of the two materials. It's called bulk <coughs> heterojunction in, in within the community of organic solar cell, for example. Uh, and this is sandwiched in between two electrodes. And what we do, typically this is used in a tin film <coughs> technology, so a, photo, a light photon is coming, is absorbed, and charges are generated, and you have a typical f organic photodiode. Uh, what we do now is we mix basically the scintillating particles, in our case, uh, gadolinium oxysulfide, so GADOX, into uh, the organic matrix, or organic semiconducting matrix. And what happens is that if a wrong X-ray photon is impinging, uh, we absorbed in the, in the GOS, light is emitted. Nice thing of these organic semiconductors is that they have a really high extinction coefficient, so the light which is emitted in this micrometer size particle is absorbed in within a few hundred nanometers. So there is no possibility for crosstalk from one pixel to the other. So the light is converted into charges really close to the particle. And if there is an applied field, then they are driven to the electrodes. Of course, the drawback at the moment is that for thin film devices, only for the visible, we are working with 500 nanometer uh, thicknesses. But now for an uh, X-ray detector, uh, for an uh, uh, adequate X-ray absorption, we have to go to several hundred micrometers of this stack, which is, of course, an, a problem if the materials you're using have a rather low mobility in comparison to si silicon. Uh, here there are some calculations, so basically um, for the two uh, beam qualities you use in MAMO and in RED, I calculated the uh, required layer thickness and the absorbance. So you see that uh, you need for GOS something like uh, 100 micrometer to obtain 90% of, of absorption. And if you go with the RAD uh, spectrum, then you would need something like uh, 600, 500 uh, micrometer. This is only GOSS. Uh, and, and GOSS is a quite interesting material for both applications because of its absorption. It's, it's good for mammography and it's good for um, radiography. The reason is why it's not used in, in, uh, in radiography is because cesium iodide has a better MTF because of, of the shape of the needles. But from the absorption point of view, it would be a better absorber, absorber than cesium iodide. And on the right plot, I show you, um, basically here is uh, the content of the hybrid layer. So now we are mixing the particles in the, in the organic. So the first two numbers are organic parts in weight. So it's the, the donor and the acceptor. And the last digit here is the content of the uh, scintillator, so the, the GOS content. And of course, you see here by varying, by increasing the GOS content in the layer, the required layer thickness for 90% of absorption of the X-rays in dependence on the two beam qualities uh, is, uh, is, is decreasing. So we need something like for MAMO, for uh, let's say a concentration of 1 to 2 to 24 in weight. So 24 parts GOS particles and three parts organic. Um, we need something like 170 micrometer in thickness. And of course, for a rad, we have to go to much, much higher thicknesses here, for example, uh, 800, so something which is close to the thickness, typical thickness of uh, scintillators we are using today. And uh, now how we fabricate the device. So at the beginning, we were 
just mixing it in this, in this solution. We were dispersing the particle in a solution and we were spray depositing in the, in the first project, in the Hopix project. This was a quite tedious uh, way how to generate 500 micron thick layers because you have to spray deposit at least 500 times. So it's quite time consuming and the overspray was a lot. So we came up with a new method of, of fabrication which is probably a bit unconventional for <laughs> this audience. So we, we just disperse the uh, particles in our solution of, of semiconductor and then we add, uh, so these are uh, some images of these Gauss particles. So we <coughs> use typically particles in the micrometer range so one to three uh, micrometer sites. Um, we add to the solution a counter solvent is called, so we have a precipitation and the particles are falling down and have a kind of shell of organic semiconducting materials. When you remove then all the solvents, you have a kind of powder. So this is the powder of gauss and organic. And this is just a, let's say, a cross section of these macroscopic uh, particles that are in the powder. So we have organic and we have the particles as well. And we take this powder. We basically have our substrate. We put with a mask the power in the substrate. <coughs> we just go with pressure and heat. So we are basically soft sintering our materials. And at the end, what, is, what stays on, on the substrate is a kind of pellet. You can even go on much larger substrates, of course, if you put more material and uh, easily, so this is possible to make easily 500 microns, one millimeter, whatever you want. Um, here there is a plot of two different pressures which have been applied. So you, you can see that five megapascal is still not enough for a good compactation of the layer, uh, but with 120 pascal you have a really nice uh, compact film. Uh, I think the concentration here is the one, two, 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 eight. Um, but of course, we made also a series of, of uh, pressure series to see how the compacting uh, is working in dependency on the pressure. We see that already at 15 megapascal, we have a complete compacted layer. Now a bit on electrical characterization. Um, first of all, the conversion rates I mentioned before. So this is the cross-section of, of uh, a reference, so uh, organic semiconducting materials um, versus one with particles. So the conversion rates for the uh, reference are rather low. This is the direct conversion of an organic semiconducting material, so it's rather low because the absorption is low. Uh, and here we have the um, conversion rates for uh, two different samples uh, with two different loadings of, of, of Gauss. So the red is one to, uh, one to eight, and the blue one is the, uh, has double of, of Gauss inside. And here you can see that, uh, of course, with increasing electrical field, you increase the extraction of charges, so you are going to levels which are already uh, acceptable for mammography. So this is the mammography line, and this would be the red line. Um, this was quite encouraging at that time, so really nice uh, uh, responses to X-rays. Uh, problem of, of the first project was that the dark current, so the leakage current, are by far too high for uh, industrial applications because usually well, what amorphous silicon has is, is some below the 10 to the minus 7. So we have order of magnitudes uh, higher leakage currents in comparison to the amorphous silicon. So, um, we had to somehow change our material because uh, there are so many organic semiconducting materials which could be useful, so we have somehow to do a screening. Uh, so we changed material, particularly for the second uh, project. Uh, but uh, now, first, um, the figure of the modulation transfer function. So here you see basically that um, different MTF for increasing thickness of the hybrid layer. So from 8 micron to 170 micron. And this is, of course, uh, interesting here. It's different from the cesium iodide that 
the MTF is not decreasing with increasing thickness. Um, and this is now, uh, as a reference, we used basically a stacked cesium iodide scintillator, 300 micrometer, um, on top of a thin film OPD array. And you immediately can see the advantage of the technology. So the MTF at five, uh, let's say, or two, two lines per millimeter is still 0.4. So this is comparable with uh, a direct converter uh, like amorphous selenium. And these are basically the picture for these MTFs. You see that the, there is clear, a, a much better image quality the, for, for the hybrid than for the um, stack detector. What we also screened was the content of, of GOS. This is uh, also a bit cost driven. Uh, the, cost, the GOS material is something which is a commodity product, is produced in, in Asia in tons. Um, the cost is something like a few cents per gram. And of course, the most costly material in the stack is, is the organic semiconducting material. So we have a certain interest to reduce as much as possible the organic semiconductor. So uh, by increasing the GOS content, of course, uh, what you see at the beginning, the conversion rates are getting higher because the absorption is higher. The GOS is emitting more light. Uh, but sooner or later, you end up in a, in a stack where the transport of the charges is hindered. So you have a kind of a decrease again in the conversion rate. And we call this, this um, fill factor, the golden fill factor. And we published this, this uh, results in, uh, in Nature Photonics in 2015. Um, of course, this is still uh, valid for uh, thin film devices. And this was also the end of, of the Hopix project. Uh, now we, uh, this is just a couple of, of nice images which have been um, realized in, within this project. So you see here the five lines per millimeter are nicely seeable still. Um, an USB stick, uh, acoustic hearing apparatus. Um, but this was, was the end of the project. And then we, luckily, we got a, a new project on the same topic in, within the, in an EU project. So we tried to improve, yeah, we tried to improve um, all the things which were uh, not well in the first project. So in particular, the, the reduction of the leakage current. Um, Additionally to the hybrid uh, converting layer, we are also using a, um, another uh, disruptive <coughs> approach, so an active pixel uh, in uh, uh, ICTHO, so in, in metal oxide material. This is, is, is already a, a picture of the pixel we are using. So a 3T1C, so the storage capacitor and the 3Ts. Um, so the, in the consortium is a quite strong consortium, quite committed. So there is a BSF, of course, for the uh, perf high performing materials in terms of organic semiconductors. There is EMEC and, uh, and TNO, which are developing exactly uh, the ICSO backplane and the readout electronic. Uh, the active pixel, of course, is delivered for a so large pixel. This is one mi 100 micron. Um, needs a custom made readout chip. Um, this is uh, taken care by IC Sense, also in Belgium, so a ROIC, customized ROIC. Uh, and uh, let's say high-end uh, simulations are, by, uh, are made by uh, MorphWise. Um, so from the front plane side, this is uh, some results we obtained so far. Um, the materials of, of BSF really helped us to improve the leakage current. As you can see here, we are three orders of magnitude lower than with the previous material we used in the previous project. This is, is, is quite interesting. So we are in a industrial relevant level at the moment, so below 10 to the minus six milliamps per square centimeter. Uh, this is just a response to an X-ray pulse. Uh, what we are struggling at the moment, it's uh, of course now we are in thicknesses which are 300 or uh, micrometer above. Uh, what we are struggling at the moment are the low conversion rates. So I told you before the target is somewhere in 4,000 uh, electrons per nanogram per square millimeter, and we have a factor 10 less. 
Um, this is, of course, not what we, we would like to be at the moment. Uh, simulation, Monte Carlo simulation, have shown that we have, um, so if this is the, the device stack, uh, we have different zones, collect collection zones. So we have high collection zones for gen photo generated uh, charge carriers, which are close to the electrodes, but we have a huge uh, part of the device where the recombination as is shown here so the recombination picks up in the middle of the device and we have now to take care how it's possible to extract these charges from the middle of the device in particular for 300 micrometer thick devices and this is something which uh, we are working right now from the uh, backline side um, as already mentioned we have the uh, 3T active pixel um, design. This is a, an image of uh, a first demonstrator backplane, so 256, 256 pixels on a six, six inch wafer. This is a transfer characteristic of, of one of these ICTSO TFTs, so we have excellent uh, TFT characteristics. Um, <coughs> this is a top level of the silicon readout chip, which has been developed by IC Sense. Uh, I have to say that uh, it was, of course, a one-shot project, so uh, they had only one possibility to design the chip, and the chip uh, must work for that. No possibility for failures, and we were really happy uh, a couple of weeks ago to see that the chip was working. <laughs> um, and, of course, the readout electronic is, is also ongoing, and we are really now uh, ready for starting first measurements. So I'm... In my summary slide, uh, I hope that I could show you that the hybrid approach has a huge potential for flat panel X-ray detectors. Um, the technology has this let's say, intrinsic um, advantage of high MTF because there is no light uh, which can be scattered or whatsoever um, going to neighboring pixels. Um, with the new materials from BSF, we were able to reduce the dark current massively. Uh, however, we have at the moment uh, a lack in sensitivity, which we have to address. And the DICOMO project, we have still one, a bit more than one year to run, so we hope to solve these this, uh, issues. And hopefully in Medisense 2017, I can show you a VGA demonstrator, which is planned. And uh, make a benchmark with uh, existing technologies, but for the moment that's that's all. And uh, okay, I started my talk with acknowledging the financial supporters, and now I'd like to finish with acknowledging you for your attention. <laughs>